Today we're gonna to be making one of my favorite dishes and I'm gonna show you how super easy it really is. Today's fan favorite is my version of spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs is one of those dishes that keeps everybody happy, including me. And it's super easy, and all we need to do is make some really good meatballs, and mine are a little bit different because I have a little bit of orange zest and toasted fennel seed in it. Really good tomato sauce, which involves using really good tomatoes. I actually personally use San Marzano's, and some really good pasta. Today we're using fresh, but you can use dried. What is it about spaghetti and meatballs that you just keep coming back to and you find so comforting? Other than the fact that I love to like curl up with a big bowl of it and a glass of red wine. Probably that I used to fantasize that I was Italian, even though I'm French Canadian. Uh, I lived in Italy for a year, so I actually got to sort of learn the beautiful ways of their culture. And I also have a bit of a slight obsession with the Godfather movies, which you know, because I think on one of our first dates, I made you watch it late at night and I made you um, pasta with just garlic and chili flakes. Renee like nobody else can rewatch movies and I'm pretty sure she's rewatched the whole Godfather trilogy maybe 50 times. So I actually went to uh, the local butcher yesterday, Brianna at Vessel Meats, and I got her to do some ground pork and ground beef. You don't have to use pork and beef, you could use just pork, you could use just beef, you could do lamb. Why do you use the combo though? I actually like the combo of the pork and the beef because I like the fattiness and the flavor of the pork, but I also like sort of like the meatiness of the beef. So I've got my ground beef and I like to do, you can go half and half, you can go more of one or less of the other, but I'm going to do half and half today. And she actually ground this for me. So if you have a local butcher where you live, you know, talk to them and get them to do it for you. Yeah, Brianna gets amazing meat, mostly locally sourced, I believe. Yes. And it's always so fresh and it's really cared for, which I think is a, a big difference between, you know, grocery store meat and, you know, your local butcher. So I've got my meat into my bowl. And what I have here is I've taken some of our brioche buns from work. You could use any bread. Uh, so I've done it with sourdough. I've done it with just plain white bread. And I soak it in milk. And what this does, it just gives it a really nice, light, airy, sort of texture to your meatballs. I mean, Doug, have you noticed that when I make meatballs that yeah. it has a really nice texture? For sure. Texture. So I'm gonna put that in there. Can you do it without the pané? The paned? Pan the paned, sorry. Yes, of course you can. Okay. Of course, this is just my version of a meatball. Uh, I'm gonna add an egg to that. I have some fennel seed, which I've toasted up a little bit. And to me, fennel seed always reminds me of like Italian sausage and it just has a beautiful like earthy flavor. I also like the like, the little crunch when you eat the meatball. A little bit of chili flakes. How do we want these super spicy? Well, if the kids are going to eat them, maybe medium. All right. Well, I'm going to add a little bit more than that. Uh, just some chopped parsley. Um, you could use basil in here. You could use fresh oregano. I guess the thing is too with these meatballs, they don't have to just be for spaghetti. No, you could actually, I think I've done this and then I've actually, instead of doing like the parsley and the fennel, I've done like cumin and coriander. I've done cilantro and mint. And then I've like cooked it in a tomato sauce with um, chickpeas. Or in a sandwich, perhaps? Well, rumor has it, we've got a meatball sub at work this week, so. Heck yes. So I'm just going to microplane some fresh garlic into here as well. And my secret ingredient in this, Doug, actually is orange zest. So I'm just gonna put the zest of one orange because I really like the, the sweetness and the freshness and orange and fennel, I think, are a really amazing combination together. And you can taste it, like there's a little hint to it, which is nice, but yeah. it's not, you, unless you knew it was in there, you probably wouldn't even pick it up. So usually when I'm at work, what I would do is I would season it and then I'd cook a little bit off just to make sure that my seasoning is perfect. But I've made this recipe in my sleep, so it's pretty easy for me to do. And some people, I will say, Renee, just based on comments and things like that, they are shocked sometimes by the amount of salt that you use. But the salt thing is, this is how Renee does it. You can always choose how much salt you want. And the last ingredient that I'm gonna do is I've got some beautiful um, young Asiago from Chiro, who is this lovely Italian man here in Nova Scotia, and he makes the most amazing cheeses. And I've got his young Asiago, and I also have some of his like 24 month old or 36 month old Doug to actually finish um, our spaghetti and meatballs with. Everything is into my bowl, and now I'm gonna start mixing. And what do I always tell you, Doug? What is your best tool? Your best tool are your own hands. 
They are your own hands. And yes, my hands are clean. I just washed them again. But I like to use my hands because you can actually feel like the texture of everything. So you know if it's too wet, you know if it's too dry. All I smell over here is like the fennel and the orange and the garlic. And it's like, it smells really good. And all I'm gonna do now, basically, is if I was at work, I would um, form these and weigh them so that they're all the same weight. Or at home, you could use a ice cream scoop, which a lot of people do as well. But I'm basically just gonna like form them, free form them, uh, like the size of a golf ball. Some people like big meatballs. Some people like small balls. I like medium-sized balls, like that. There you go. I can't wait to eat these, actually. I have oil on my sheet pan and my meatballs, but I actually find it easier to shape them, put them in a sheet pan, and then I roast mine in the oven so they get a beautiful, like, even browning color. And you know what, Doug? They don't fall apart because I've certainly done it in with my sauce before and they fall apart. So I'm just gonna throw them in my oven and while these are roasting, we're gonna make our really simple tomato sauce. All right, so the meatballs are in the oven roasting, and now I'm gonna get the tomato sauce going. Really easy, I've got my pan, I've got some olive oil in there, and I've thinly sliced some garlic on my Ben Renner. And I like lots of garlic, uh, and I like the sort of like nice, thin, like crunchy bits of the garlic in the sauce. I think that's what really makes it. Why would you do this like versus chopping the garlic? I mean, you can chop the garlic. I just like the nice, like thin looking, like little slivers of garlic, especially in my sauce. And then I'm using um, both San Marzano um, whole tomatoes, and I've actually got some of the crushed tomatoes as well. And what is it with the San Marzanos? Because I know that like, Everyone always talks about San Marzanos. Well, the San Marzanos are obviously a variety of plum tomato, um, but they are, their skin is a little bit, is it like a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker? There's a little bit less acidity in a San Marzano tomato and a little bit more sweetness. This is like literally if I could like, perf if there's a perfume and I could bottle this scent, it would be amazing of garlic and olive oil just frying together. I think people are going to be a little surprised with how simple this sauce is. It is actually really simple. Now you could do whatever you wanted to this. You could add chili flakes to make it a little bit spicier. You could add red wine, you could add white wine, but I'm just going to keep this really super, super simple because the star of this dish really Doug, is the meatballs. I'm going to use my hands again and I'm going to just crush the whole tomatoes in here. And let's say you wanted to do like um, a different type of meatball. I'd still use the same sauce as a base. I don't use tomato paste in my sauce to thicken it, but I do find that the crushed tomato has a really beautiful, like silky, smooth, like thick texture. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of that in there as well. So since you're not using tomato paste, does that mean that you have to like cook down your sauce more or does it thicken like without the tomato paste pretty well? I don't want a really like thick sauce. I want it to just make sure that it like sticks to the balls and to the pasta itself. Now, all you wanna do at this point is I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And then what I do is I put my meatballs in the sauce and then I let them simmer together for about half an hour up to an hour so that the two flavors can come together. All right, my meatballs have been cooking, my sauce is simmering. I have a pot of boiling salted water that I'm getting ready for my pasta. I'm just gonna check my meatballs to make sure they're good. And they are. So I'm just gonna put a few of these into the sauce to simmer. They See how they've like browned nicely. Makes they've it so much easier to not have to fool around with them in a pan, eh? I've made meatballs a few times and um, they just sort of like break. And I've got this amazing fresh pasta that I got from uh, Maria's Pantry. They're um, a beautiful little shop that's actually right behind the restaurant. And he made this beautiful bucatini, which is like a nice like thicker pasta. And the good thing about fresh pasta is it doesn't take long to cook. So this takes, according to the box, two to four minutes in boiling salted water. And that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so the meatballs have been simmering away in the tomato sauce. I have strained my pasta and now it's time to plate. All right, so some of this gorgeous bucatini from Maria's. How many meatballs would you like, Doug? Let's do three. All right, I like to first um, put some of my sauce. And I know you were asking me the other day why I don't mix mine ahead of time. I like to uh, let the kids and then you mix. Because some people would like to sort of like 
toss their pasta like in a bowl ahead of time to get everything evenly coated, but you don't yeah. think that's necessary then? I just like to be able to see everything. I like to see the beautiful pasta and I like to see the sauce and I like to see the meatballs. Look at that. I'm even like cleaning up my edges for you. Would you like some chili flakes on it? Of course. Always. All right, some chili flakes. And I have some of these really fun like little fennel shoots that somebody dropped off at work, which works well because we have fennel. And then last but not least, I've got this piece of Chiro's cheese, which is like, I think this one's a 36, Doug. So we're just gonna make it rain. Ah, Siago, look at that. Beauty. Now, Doug. Yes. I wanna make you an offer that you can't refuse. Come and eat some of my spaghetti and meatballs. Oh my. All right. Godfather, the first one. Of course, of course. All right. Should we lady in the trampet? Sorry, Mr. Corleone, what did you say? <laughs> Should we lady in the trampet? We can try. That would be very cute. I'm going to have a glass of wine. How about you? Yeah, a little Chianti on right. a Sunday morning. Why not? Can't argue with that. All right. Dig in, Doug. Okay. I've already been taste testing. Have you? Yes. Well, we need a little cheers first. Oh, cheers. Cheers. I believe this is our 15th episode, which is crazy. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So cheers to 15. Cheers to 15. I don't know how significant a number 15 is, but we're going to go with it. Doug. Revenge is a dish best served cold. The Maria's Pantry pasta is amazing. I do love it. I mean, I love fresh pasta, but I also love dried pasta, especially if it's good quality. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be overcooked. It should always be al dente. Try the meatballs. It's the meatballs that are the star of the That's show. That's where I'm going right now. I already ate one. You never eat with me. This is the story of my life. I always eat. Renee says she's been snacking all day and she doesn't eat. And then I eat for two. This dish is, you don't need anything more. It's just like. Simple, easy, easy to do at home. Yeah, I Perfect love it. meal at night, especially exactly. if you have kids. In the winter, it's amazing. And if you make enough meatballs and you make enough sauce, then the next day, maybe you could make yourself a meatball sandwich. Or you could make yourself meatballs on rice. Well, make sure to subscribe, click like. We're gonna continue eating, so cheers to 15. Cheers to 15. We'll see you soon.